The next topic concerns energy methods in plane motion for rigid bodies. Um, this is really about the principle of work and energy, as we've seen before uh, for particles. And the statement is exactly the same. The initial kinetic energy plus the work done in the process is equal to the final kinetic energy. Uh, so the statement of work and energy is the same for rigid bodies as it is for particles. However, there are some differences, when it, particularly when it comes to kinetic energy, but also with work. The definition for work isn't changing with rigid bodies. The work is still defined as the integral of the force dotted with dr, the differential displacement, from some point A1 to A2. And it's still important to recognize that this integral has to be carried out along the path. <clears throat> now we're going to restrict ourselves to some simple cases for work, uh, for rigid body motion. For example, a constant force along a straight line. In this case the work is just equal to F times delta X. Right, where delta X is the distance over which the force acts. Okay. Another case that comes up are constant moments. Now for particles we never had to consider the work done by moments, it wasn't since orientation of particles weren't important, but now that we're considering uh, rigid bodies that have some dimension and whose orientation matters, we do need to consider the work done by moments. But we'll, so and the work done for a moment is just equal to, again, the integral, now it's over some angular path, theta 1 to theta 2, of the moment times d theta. And we're going to restrict ourselves to cases where either this integral is very simple to do, in other words, m is an explicit function of theta, uh, or the case where the moment doesn't change, in which case it's simply m times delta theta. That's for a constant, where the moment is of a constant magnitude. We'll see the work due to gravity acting on a rigid body a lot in this uh, section. Still, the statement for work done by gravity is the same as it was for a particle. That is, it's the weight, m times g, times y2 minus y1. But in this case, it's very important to recognize that the coordinate y is written with respect to the mass center. So we're concerned with the elevation change of the center of mass of the rigid body, okay? Not necessarily any other point on the rigid body. Okay? So that's for the work of gravity. We'll see some springs doing work, elastic springs. There's no change in the expression for this work and no change in consideration. It's just one half times the stiffness constant times delta squared minus delta squared. Remember, delta is the length of the spring with respect to the relaxed position. Okay, so that's uh, all we need to be concerned with uh, in terms of work. And now a little bit about the kinetic energy expression in the principal work and energy for rigid bodies. It's really not a big departure from what we saw in the past. Essentially the kinetic energy for a rigid body is one half m v squared, but now we're talking about the translational velocity of the mass center. So I'll subscript that with a g. So that's the translational kinetic energy, but also our rigid bodies can rotate. So we have to consider the rotational aspects of their kinetic energy. So we add to this one half i, the mass moment of inertia about the mass center g times omega squared, the angular velocity. And so that is an expression for
the kinetic energy of a rigid body in plane motion. Okay, we have to consider the translational kinetic energy and the rotational. Okay, they both contribute to the kinetic energy. If your rigid body happens to be rotating about a point that is not its mass center, all right, then you can write the kinetic energy as one half I about the axis of rotation O omega squared. All right, so that is about the axis of rotation. And you can find that using the tables for mass, uh, mass moment of inertia about a mass center and the parallel axis theorem. So just going back to the principle of work and energy, For uh, rigid bodies in plane motion, principle of work and energy is exactly like we saw for particles. You develop it just the same way. You find you know, the initial kinetic energy plus the work equals the final kinetic energy. The important thing to keep in mind, the kinetic energy now includes not just translation of the mass center, but also rotation about the mass center. And a couple of uh, the exceptions, well the one exception I pointed out for gravity uh, work done by gravity when it comes to work is the um, we're interested in the elevation change of the mass center. We can also consider conservation of energy. It's exactly the same as we saw for particles. All right, the initial kinetic plus potential energy will equal the final kinetic plus potential energy if all of, if we know that all of the forces are conservative. All right, so again we've got the potential functions, one for gravity, which is uh, mg times y, and the potential for a spring is one half k delta squared. Those are about the only things we're going to see for rigid body motion uh, in writing things in terms of conservation of energy, gravity and uh, springs. And one last concept. If you have more than one rigid body interacting in a system, you can, just like we did for particles, you can write the principle of work and energy for a system. That is, the kinetic energy of all rigid bodies in the system, the work done on all rigid bodies of the system, and just like we saw for particles, the work done by internal forces, that is, forces associated with the interactions of rigid bodies, bumping into each other, connected by cables or ropes or whatever, those internal forces will cancel out. So you can ignore those. And that's all there is to this section, the principle of work and energy, just like we saw for particles with a couple of modifications.